Welcome, this is Leading with Spirit, the show that gives you an in-depth look at topics like what it takes to navigate your spiritual journey, how to heal yourself and grow your spiritual gifts, and balanced practices to expand your business and your spiritual leadership. I'm your host, Spirit Bird, shamanic teacher, healer, and author, here to guide you on your journey to becoming your most potent spiritual leader. Um, we share with you today about listening to the dream of your of the earth, um, finding your unique purpose. And um, I'd like to begin just a little bit about me. Uh, I'm Spirit Bird Holton. Uh, thank you, Patricia, for that introduction. I'm the founder of Shaman School. I, I work with uh, healers, help to grow their business, to grow their unique spiritual gifts. Um, and I love pl- in the working in this place of bringing together our unique spiritual gifts and our personal life story in a way that can come into the 3D, that can come into ordinary life and actually make a difference. But that's also still super fun for us and for probably many people that are here today and um, are interested in this kind of work. Um, We have uh, a different way of looking at the world and a different way of accessing information. And I feel like we're just beginning to really blossom in that and sharing that and letting it come through. So you're in the right place. Um, And continuing to listen to that desire is how it all begins. So what is listening to the dream of the earth? Well, the earth dreams through us. It dreams through our own dreams. It dreams through our own desires. And, you know, coming back to what this is all about of being a voice of Gaia, means, you know, allowing our authentic voice and who we are and our authentic self and what we actually truly want in our hearts to come through and be part of, again, this reality, this um, matrix or web of life that we know as Gaia. So oftentimes these dreams, again, come through our own desire. And it isn't, of course, always material things. It's usually not, but sometimes it is. And I want to say that because oftentimes I think as women and especially as people that might be following a spiritual path, we tend to uh, push away sort of the material things. Um, And I just like to include all of it, include all of it in what your desires are. And I'm going to be sharing a little bit more about how to tell the difference between, you know, your real conscious desire, your like higher desires and maybe some of the more egoic desires. Because I know for me, for a lot of my life, um, I had trouble telling the difference and I felt guilty if any of my higher desires might've been connected to something material. So know that it isn't always material things, but sometimes it is. More often than not though, uh, listening to the dream of the earth and finding your unique purpose is actually more related to um, the longing to be someone or to do something. And sometimes it starts out really vague. We don't really know. We just, it really usually starts out as a feeling. And um, one of the things I teach and that I've learned in my lifetime is how to follow those feelings because they have something really important for us, something really important for others, and usually something really important for the healing in this planet. So your dreams can be something big or small. It can be something like restoring a park in your neighborhood. Um, hosting a small event. It can be related to art or, um, you know, really in, uh, intending to be a conscious parent. It can be related to community service or maybe creating a nonprofit or a motivational speaking gig. Um, probably for a lot of people, it has to do with uh, having a spiritual business or having spirituality be part of your business. And um, the longing or the desires can also be around a desire to create innovative programs, to create groundbreaking leadership, um, to create innovative ways of doing things. Maybe again, we're not totally clear on what that is, but we know we have like a pull to that. We know that there's something about that that excites us. Um, It can also be dreams of being someone, like being someone who stands with other women leaders or being invited to co-host ceremonies or special events even. So knowing that these dreams, these desires that we have um, are part of where our dream as an individual and the earth's dream for us actually meet. This is the sign to follow for yourself. 
I remember having dreams ago uh, years ago of being asked to support ceremonies of mentors that I admired um, or had, thinking at the time that they were really far away from me, um, that it was like this far out dream. And then one day you wake up and it happens and it's really exciting. And not only is it possible, but following that dream for me has required me to do the healing work to actually become that person that I was dreaming of. It is also um, as that person that my unique brilliance actually gets to come out. Um, Gay Hendricks talks a lot about moving from your zone of excellence to your zone of genius. And I think if we're fortunate, a lot of us are in our zone of excellence where life is pretty good. We're able to take care of our basic needs. Um, We probably feel good about what we do. We're probably pretty good at it. And then um, we might find ourselves actually getting bored in that place because while our ego is getting a lot of good stuff from the thing and we're feeling safe and we can um, we can feel nourished. Um, there's a part of our genius that isn't actually being used. And so again, when we follow those pathways from the thing that we're dreaming of and allow ourselves to even just court that this is a possibility and what would it take and what do I need to heal in myself to believe that this is possible, then we can actually step forward into our zone of genius where we're doing the unique work that we came here to do. Um, And, you know, when we do that again, we make a bigger impact, but more than that, I mean, I want to say this because for, again, for a lot of conscious people, you know, our underlying motivation is really to help others and to help the planet and make the world a better place. Right. But I, I always love to come back to the self too, because oftentimes we skip over the self and this is such an important part about really allowing our dream to come forward and meet the dream of the earth so we can find that sweet spot. So for me, a lot of this work is also just having fun. <laughs> like, Yes, I'm doing the work I'm doing to make an impact and to help other people, but also it's because it's fun for me. My genius gets to come out and gets to play and gets to be nourished by other people and their genius as well. So today I want to share with you um, three keys that I've learned along the way of listening to the dream of the earth and the magic that can come as a result of that. Um, So I'll start with, um, I'll start with this. Along the path, we can sometimes get caught up um, in trying to, in like the trap of self-improvement, trying to become better instead of trying to be us or trying to be more human. This can look like trying to control your emotions or harness your emotions instead of allowing yourself to flow with emotions, right? So for example, maybe if you're starting your path, um, starting your conscious path or starting your awakening journey or starting to dive into spiritual work, that you might run into an issue where, um, you know, you don't like when you're angry, right? And so a lot of people will try to control that part of it. Maybe it comes from, you know, being in a home that was loud. And so actually it's just overwhelming when you're around anger, or maybe it comes from like, maybe you've let off, (laughs) exploded one too many times and it caused negative reactions. And so we can try to like restrict ourselves from these parts of us that we see as not being great as seeing like being less than as seeing as not being high vibe. Right. And so we actually want to get rid of that story that there's parts of us to cut out and instead move into the understanding that there's parts of us to actually just heal. And when we can heal them, then we can include them. And this is one of the main steps in really allowing yourself to become that person that you're dreaming of, again, so that we can be that voice of Gaia. And so we can bring through the what the earth is dreaming up and through us. Um, Yeah, so the second thing I wanna talk about that might be helpful for you here is the difference between the ego desire and the conscious desire. And again, um, I kind of want to emphasize this here because for me, I noticed that uh, desire was a big piece that was holding me back again. Because if there was anything that was really related to me, uh, I thought that that it was automatically ego. Even just the idea, uh, the fantasy of you know being invited to host events, being invited to work alongside people that I saw as being um, spiritual leaders uh, felt like that was egoic for me. And what I realized is that um, some desires are, and some desires are conscious desires, 
egoic desires I find often come for me out of reaction. Um, and I'll, I'll describe it more as a feeling cause I'm very much a feeler. So when I am, maybe I see somebody doing something that maybe I think I can do better. And I have a little bit of like envy that they're getting some credit for something that I think that I can do better. I'm human. Right. Um, and so there's a place where I might get into a reactionary stage where it's like, well, now what happens in my energy is, uh, what I notice that egoic desire comes in. It will come in and oftentimes it feels like it's trying to go up and above someone else might be like trying to like become higher than them or overwhelm, right? Um, oftentimes the egoic reaction um, for your desire can come from feeling like you want to, like it's like a hierarchy struggle, feeling like you're either less than or need to become more than, right? It's very much of this like higher or lower uh, mind frame that that reaction being in that reaction and the desires that come from that place is often the egoic desire. Uh, maybe somebody teased you about how you dressed when you were little. And so your desire for clothes is actually out of reaction for that and that you think you need to look a certain way in order to not be teased anymore, right? It doesn't mean that you don't get to want nice clothes. It just means that might be coming from an uh, egoic reaction. Uh, there's oftentimes like a push, um, uh, like a push or a pressure related to it. Um, but I want do want to say that when a desire comes in, whether it's egoic or conscious, just because it's conscious doesn't mean that you won't have some fear associated with it. So the conscious desire, what makes this different is uh, I find often it seems like it comes out of nowhere. Um, and of course, we know that's not actually true. It doesn't come out of nowhere. It comes out of the dream of the earth, of the web of life, of Gaia consciousness. Um, it comes out of the collective field, right? Um Oftentimes it comes when, uh, you know, our conscious desires come when our mind isn't working and we're actually doing something that just makes us happy. Um, and when we're in those states, it's because we're actually open to receiving from the earth. Um, I'll give an example. And I was just talking to Patricia about this uh, in our recent podcast episode. And I was sharing one of the things I started to notice actually with uh, the way that I create when I'm creating from really my brilliance instead of like my mind or trying to make things happen. For me, I started to notice that actually my creations come in through words first. Um, I ran a program at the beginning of the year called Holy. And what happened is a few months before that offer came forward, I just kept hearing the word holy in my head. Holy, 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 holy. And um, similarly, I just released a program called Earth Embodiment. And that actually was like a dream seed that was planted gosh, like three years ago, I think, um, I was out on a hike and the term just came through my head or came from somewhere. It felt like it came out of nowhere, right? I was just hiking. I happened to be some, you know, in my happy place, happened to be in a beautiful place. Um, that word or phrase came through and I knew when it came through that it meant something. I knew that it was significant, but I had no other information or other idea about it beyond that. And this is just an example, again, of one of the dreams of the earth. And so as I started, like I held it, I held it in my awareness over the course of several years, kind of with this question of what is this? What wants to come through here? Because it feels like it's important and it feels like it might be related to some of my life's work. Um, and over the course of years of the years, like I would have ideas come through, right. And my mind would try to decide or discern what it is or like create something around it. Um, but I knew to just sort of like, let it rest and see, you know, when it was time for it to come up much like this summit has come together. And then, uh, a few months ago, I happened to be on vacation and in the middle of the night, I woke up. Um, and I tried to get back to sleep for a while and I was kind of fighting it. And I finally just realized like my mind was going or, you know, my consciousness was going with some ideas. So I finally just got up and started a journal and then just like in one big transmission, earth embodiment came out and it was very, very clear. It was like, this is for people. This is for in-person ceremonies. We'll be working with a different plant medicine with each ceremony. And the purpose is to help spiritual leaders, um, really come into their own lives, like their own life work and bring it forward into the world. And it's something that I wouldn't have been able to just create from sitting down and trying to go through these stages of planning, right? And this is very much how the earth dreams through us. 
And those little, those little thoughts, again, that sometimes feel like they come out of nowhere or sometimes feel like sort of a fantasy or like this would be nice someday are often the earth's dreams. So the third thing I want to share about is um, the best times to notice the dream of the earth when it's coming through you. Um, In that particular example with earth embodiment, for me, I actually notice it's in the middle of the night, which is slightly annoying, (laughs) slightly annoying that the earth um, dreams through me in the middle of the night and I have to wake up. But actually, once I realized that, uh, I started to realize that um, I stopped fighting it, right? And I, if I happen to wake up in the middle of the night in one of those places where maybe I can feel like my heart is kind of racing, there's like a sense of excitement, um, and I can tell that I'm actually not going to fall back asleep soon. Now I know that there's a very, very good chance that spirit, that something is trying to speak through me or move through me. Um, for me, it happens to be in the middle of the night also, because my mind is very much out of the way. I've had some time to rest. And so when I wake up, there isn't anything between me and my heart's calling. Right. And so I can just let it come out. And I found that now that I've realized that, Um, instead of fighting it and trying to fall asleep for two or three hours and not having success, I'll just get up and channel whatever is in my awareness. And then usually I can go right back to sleep after that. Um, Of course, another place that you are more, that it's clearer to notice these dreams, these conscious desires um, is early in the morning. When you first wake up, same thing. Early in the morning, uh, a lot of us can have a tendency to sort of like jump up or rush out of bed. And one of the things that I've learned to do is actually just give myself some time. Even, you know, even if I keep my eyes closed and I just don't move, but I'm awake, just giving myself those extra five or 10 minutes to actually process, process what my dreams were, process what's in my system right now, process whatever emotions are coming up or what I'm feeling for the day. And it's in these times that I also, um, and it's much easier at these times to, discern what is important for me to actually look at and work on today. Oftentimes it's different than what my mind would tell me to do. And so again, learning to listen to this difference between the egoic desires and the conscious desires between the mind and the dream of the earth um, actually ends up helping me a lot more too. It makes everything I do a lot easier. (laughs) Um, There is just less work involved with bringing things forward because there's such a connection to what you're actually doing here. Again, like like uh, Patricia was saying, it's from a heart space. Of course, another great place to listen to the dream of the earth is walks in nature. Um, and I also like to add here, sometimes we can make things harder for ourselves than they need to be. Um, I know for me that uh, I used to live up in Alaska and I had access to like epic, epic places to walk. And I, and I live in Kentucky now and it's beautiful here too, but I just don't quite have access to so much like free open space. There's lots of fences. There's definitely some magic in the land here. It's just different. And so I noticed for me that I started to create or like make uh, what I wanted further away than it needed to be. It was like, well, you know, I really get inspired when I walk in nature but the closest place that's like really like beautiful and epic is like an hour away. So then I have to drive an hour and then there's like a two hour commute. And then it turns into like a half a day just to get somewhere in nature that feels like it's actually out. And I've actually learned that that's not true at all. Um, And that walks even just outside in the community here, even through some of the neighborhoods is also still nature. It's also still inspiring. You don't actually have to get away from everything. Sometimes that helps, but you don't actually have to get away from everything for it to be nature. Um, Because again, right, we're part of nature as humans. And so even just going outside for a walk through a development (laughs) can still be inspiring. We don't actually have to make it uh, make inspiring moments or um, the search for what will open us We don't have to make that far away or, um, you know, this big pilgrimage. We can actually just make it easy for ourselves. Um, So I say walks in nature, but that just means outside. (laughs) Um, Another great place to notice the dream is actually just simply by closing your eyes, right? We can close our eyes. That's one of the simplest ways to just actually tap into our inner knowing very, very quickly. And then the last place to tap into the dream of the earth is through song or dance. 
Um, yes, easy is the best. <laughs> um, yeah, through song and dance. Again, this is such a part of being human is actually moving, uh, is moving our voice, moving our body. And when we're in those places, um, we can access, you know, our heart so much easier. Our mind tends to be out of the way. And again, when we're in these places that just bring us joy, when we're in these situations or doing things that just bring us joy, the pathway from the earth is open so that we're easy, so that we're, it's easier to receive the messages from her. So one of the lessons here, right, is really to give yourself space uh, to play and allow your brilliance to come through. Uh, like Patricia was speaking in the opening also about this returning to innocence, right? When we actually allow ourselves to just do things that bring us joy uh, and can detach from the idea that it has to be X, Y, Z, that we have to do this step, then this step, then this step to get to here, that uh, I would do something that would bring myself joy, but all of these other things are more important. I'll put that last. All of those things we have backwards. And actually when we can just give ourselves the simple things that bring us joy, we're able to access and open this pathway from, from Gaia, uh, from the dream of Gaia and the dream of ourselves, let those meet and it becomes so clear. Um, and oftentimes that's the hardest part is actually detaching from all of the beliefs that we have around what's more important than that, that all of these other things need to come first so that we can do that thing. And actually just doing this simple practice is what allows it to become louder. And then the louder it gets, the clearer the, the right steps for you become. It's still a practice, still a practice for me. I still have to sometimes close my eyes at the beginning of my day when I have all the things that I want to do. Uh, you know, I'm very creative. I'm a visionary. I have all these different programs that I want to offer someday. And, you know, it's really easy for my mind to come in and say, well, you know, I really want to do this one, but this one makes more sense right now. And it's a practice for me to just have to learn to like close my eyes and tap back in. Like, what is the earth actually dreaming through me right now? What does my heart desire right now if I ignore everything else, all of the shoulds, what would I do? What would bring me the most joy? And that is the pathway to follow. So the invitation, um, you know, is to start to undo the beliefs that we need to work hard or that there are specific steps to take uh, before something can happen. Uh, and so throughout the next few days uh, or even next few months, the invitation for you is to listen um, listen to those thoughts that are coming through that seem to come out of nowhere or seem to come in when you are in a place of happiness or joy. Um, listen to the thoughts that give you this burst of excitement. Again, a lot of times the excitement is followed by fear. So do know that if there's like a little bit of fear or a lot of fear right behind it, that doesn't mean that it's the wrong direction. It probably actually means that it's the right direction. But uh, it's subtle because I usually notice for me, it's like excitement and sometimes it's fast before it goes into the fear, especially if it's, you know, a bigger thing. If it's like I'm stepping more into my life's work, I might have more, <laughs> more fear around it. But that's only because I know it's right. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then from there, allow yourself the space to believe to believe that actually this desire or this dream that you're having might be true. That perhaps it has everything you've been asking for. Um, and perhaps it's the exact thing that the earth is dreaming up through you as well. Oftentimes those dreams, maybe again, like I said at the beginning, um, sometimes they just seem like small things or they don't seem related to how you will get to where you want to be but it's those dreams that actually are. When we follow those, we're in the flow. We find ourselves in the right situation at the right time around the right people for the thing to happen fairly effortlessly. There might still be action involved, but it doesn't have to be, again, that like egoic desire that is usually followed with it being like a push or it being hard. Um, so again, um, just taking moment over the next some days to just notice when you're having those desires and give them a little bit of space, give yourself permission to play with them for a moment and to have the belief that maybe this is the exact right step that you need to take so that your dream 
and the earth stream can come together and create something really beautiful. That's also really fun for you and for the people that are involved with it. Have you been hearing the call to expand your spiritual gifts and step into your next level of conscious leadership? If you're a coach, healer, or a spiritual leader, you can learn more about Shaman School and growing your spiritual business on our website, HoltonHealingArts.com, or send me a DM at Holton Healing Arts. Welcome to today's member query episode, where we explore questions about spiritual paths, intuitive gifts, growing a spiritual business, and shamanism. Do you have a question for us? Send us a DM at Holton Healing Arts. This question is from one of our Instagram followers. And the question is, how do you step into your full potential after leaving it aside for years? And the simple thing to do is to take a step, to start. One of the ways that we hold ourselves back or sabotage or... um, create distance between where we are and where we want to be is by over planning, by waiting and trying to get everything figured out and planned and perfect before we actually take the first step. And this is actually how you slow yourself down and keep yourself in stuck mode. So if you're wanting to step into the full potential, then you just need to start. That's it. Of course, you can get support, you can get healers, you can get coaches, um, you can get find programs that help bring forward whatever it is you want to bring forward in the world. Um, and in the end, that even that is a first step. So making that first step is the only thing you have to know about how to step into your full potential. And then after that, the next thing that you need to know is what's the next step. Oftentimes we try to see the entire picture before we make any moves. And that's not how life works. That's how we hold ourselves back, slow ourselves down and put ourselves in overwhelm. So it is nice to have a little bit of a plan. You can you can bring that in as you go. But if you're wanting to step in, the only thing you need to do is start. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Leading with Spirit. And if you did, please share the link for this episode with your biggest takeaway, tagging me at Holton Healing Arts. It would also support me if you subscribed and left a rating and review of the show so we can support more people living their highest purpose. Until next time, journey on.